Hello everyone. Good evening to another session of shooting from the net, arranged by the uh, and organized by the Fountain Pen Association of India. Today we have a very interesting guest. Uh, over the uh, last couple of months, we have had several pen manufacturers, pen restorers. Uh, last week we had Prasad, who uh, loves vintage pens, is an excellent calligrapher, and we found out a lot of information, uh, a lot of trivia from him about vintage pens, handwriting, and calligraphy. Today, we have another such individual who is an expert of sorts in handwriting. He is Mr. Y. Malikarjun Rao. He has, uh, he has uh, been conducting several such handwriting courses in uh, uh, Hyderabad for a long time. He actually started the National Handwriting Academy in 1996 by himself. He is considered to be an expert in English cursive writing, a little bit of Telugu and some Hindi as well. And he is also the first person to conduct an exhibition on handwriting. It was called the THE or the handwriting or the, the writing exhibition. So in that, T stood for Telugu, H for Hindi and E for English. Now, his focus uh, is on calligraphy, graphology, and graphotherapy. And we will definitely ask him a little bit more about graphotherapy, where he says that it can also be used as a therapeutic uh, method for people uh, to heal their psychological uh, state. Uh, and the way he started was that he is at, he's taught himself. He did not really go through any course or anything, but then he taught himself. And he, when he started the National Handwriting Academy, he developed the syllabus himself. He took a lot of time. He went through a lot of books. And then finally, the syllabus was finalized in the year 1999. Till today, he has had about 1,700 uh, written about 1,700 articles on handwriting improvement. But he works mostly in the Andhra Pradesh area and now Andhra Pradesh and Telangana. Uh, so now we'll just welcome Mr. Uh, Malika Arjun Rao. Mr. Rao, welcome to a session for, uh, Hello, uh, of uh, shooting from the dead. How are you doing, sir? It's not audible, uh, Mr. Mihir. I'm not audible to you. I can't hear. Uh, okay. Can, Let can me you check hear me? The, I can hear you. Let me check if the others are able to hear me. Uh, just give me one moment. Let me just pull up. Just give me one moment. Mr. Rao, I'm getting messages that people are able to, the audience is able to hear me. I, I can't hear anything. Okay. Uh, may I request Pradeep to call Mr. Rao? Can I try? Hello. Um, uh, yes, Mr. Pradeep, it's not audible. Yeah. Okay. I'll try it. I'll do that. Yeah. Yeah. To the audience, I apologize for this small technical delay. Uh, I have a comment here saying that I am audible and Mr. Rao is also audible but he is not able to hear me that is that seems to be the problem he is going to try disconnecting and reconnecting again we'll just have to wait for a couple of minutes for that i apologize for this delay so he is back now let's see if he is able to hear me yes mr rao are you able to hear me now yes sir. good evening thank you very much thank you for inviting okay. on fpi fpi shooting from the nib all right, wonderful. Welcome. How's how's everything, Hyderabad, sir? Are you are you in Hyderabad uh, actually right now? Or are you traveling? Yes, I am in Hyderabad. The things are getting back to normal slowly. Thank okay. you. That's good to know. Are your classes yes. being conducted right now, or is it uh, slow? 
uh, we are totally doing online but it is slow because uh, you know my handwriting is not like emergency when you have a fever you don't go to your doctor when you have a heart pain you go to uh, you run to your hospital so mine doesn't come under emergency that's why it's going a little slow now okay all right wonderful so uh, mr rao i don't know if you were able to hear me earlier but i gave quite a elaborate introduction of what you have been doing yes. all these years yes uh, let me just go to my first question then now you okay. sir you refer to yourself yeah uh, as a handwriting improvement expert yes now what exactly does that entail whom do you primarily design your programs for are they, are they for kids or adults uh, my major program goes to school going students mainly not even college going students uh, because ester years around 30 40 years ago there was no handwriting improvement trainer as such uh, english teacher used to teach english and uh, local language uh, teachers used to teach those local languages but now of late you know maybe around uh, 1996 you know 1996 97 when internet slowly started coming into the uh, society when people started uh, browsing when computers are doing major part in the communication when internet was doing when, when internet was playing uh, started playing a, a major role in communication people started writing little less i can say they did not forget of course so slowly there was uh, a necessity of mm-hmm. handwriting trainer like me and when i have come to existence people were surprised you know what do you do other than my english teacher then i had to tell them see it's not your your teacher is a subject expert maybe a science or english or mathematics or social studies they're not purely into handwriting let me tell you something about handwriting i used to pitch the principles in the beginning days in the year 1996 when i started and slowly when they started hearing me the basics behind handwriting like uh, how do you hold your writing instrument how do you sit to write how do you space the letters how do you slant the letters and the psychology behind handwriting and how you can correct one's mindset by changing certain strokes in your handwriting all these things when i started talking to them technically maybe to the teachers about uh, writer's cramp about dyslexia about dysgraphia all these things you know they were really surprised and they wanted to go for it started training from two students uh, my basic beginning batch was only with two students and now we have i have personally completed the training 430000 people and you can you can understand the necessity you can understand the severity of the problem in the society so sir 430000 is a huge number how long did it yes. take uh, for you to accomplish that am i right in guessing that it was from 1996 onward or uh, were there some so, some students before that also uh, not no students before that it's 24 years these 24 years uh, i have you know um, trained 4 lakh 30000 people wonderful that's a, that's an amazing number how does it feel yeah. when you think of that number of 430000 do you have a goal of reaching a million or maybe 10 million or 100 million that's a wonderful question i appreciate it but uh, unfortunately i don't have a bigger goals i expect if if i can stop training now i'll be the happiest person on this planet earth uh, i'll tell you why see when there is no police station when there is no court of law when there is no hospital we live very happily but when you have a problem there should be a doctor there should be a lawyer there should be a trainer there should be a, a policeman like a maturity handwriting professional nowadays in the beginning days as you asked me it was excited it i was excited it was encouraging to me it was so lucrative also but today as a matured uh, professional i i always think why is that i have to be in the field a mother a primary teacher should take care of it handwriting should happen naturally in the scholastic things or maybe naturally you know as a home uh, uh, kind of tool it should happen why is that they have to reach me or uh, somebody like me 
if there is no handwriting tanner i'll be the happiest person if i can if i can stop it here at 4 lakh thirty thousand people i'll be the happiest person more and more people coming to me or i am approaching them or they are approaching me i'm not totally happy because you know it's a problem actually uh, when a trainer is there there is a handwriting problem that, that's the thing Uh, again, Adia is lost. Uh, sorry. Yeah, no. I believe that I believe that uh, whenever there is uh, whenever kids are learning to write, I'm sure there is always there will always be a need for a handwriting expert, yeah. or not a maybe not a handwriting expert in the sense of graphology, but a handwriting yeah. improvement expert, somebody to help them yeah. learn and understand. how to yeah. write properly how to hold the pen properly uh yeah. whenever i lived abroad or traveled abroad i saw many people use the pen in a very weird manner they would not oh. have the three point grip or they would like write like this or this uh, it it's it was very strange to look at those uh, yeah. uh, the, the the way the they used to grip the pens now that kind of brings me to another uh, question now as long as the handwriting is legible why should someone bother making their handwriting appear better isn't it supposed to be more functional than aesthetic because like i said they hold the uh, pen or pencil in a very weird manner but so long yeah, as yeah. the handwriting is legible does it even matter does the grip matter or does that have an effect on the handwriting does it uh, does it make any difference yes uh, these there are two questions in this uh, i'll i'll answer in detail see firstly when handwriting is legible as long as the handwriting is legible you don't have to really work on very artistic manner or something like that because our calligraphy you use only very very typical cases very few cases you use calligraphy you don't use uh, artistic uh, handwriting every uh, part of the life if your handwriting is reasonably legible you don't need to go anywhere if if you can make it little faster also see sometimes when you go to a professional place like maybe school or college or maybe an engineering place or workplace you try to wear a uniform and when you home when you're going for a morning walk you you wear your own dress whatever the dress you know you want to wear and when you're going for a function you your attire is totally different i look at handwriting also this way when you are presenting something in the examination when you are presenting for somebody especially it needs to be very reasonably legible and i have also come out with another uh, word called scientific handwriting generally in the society people only work on two words called legibility and uh, beauty along with these two things you need to add up this word also called scientific handwriting when your t cross bar is going on the right part of the t stem as you said about graphology they are bad tempered ill tempered people and as a handwriting improvement trainer keeping this graphology graphotherapy in view if i train them it looks very uh, professional it looks standard and it will also tune their mind that is the very reason i always uh, look at handwriting as a personal personality matter your handwriting is your personality it's a photocopy of all your behavioral patterns it is you finally when you are writing something on a piece of paper you are portraying your psychology in front of some person so that is the reason it should be reasonably legible it should be scientifically uh, proven you know scientific uh, scientific kind of handwriting plus it should add little beauty also all these things happen with the help of a mother with the help of a teacher or maybe with the help of a trainer like us handwriting improvement trainer so that's why it needs to be uh, trained it, it needs to be given a little professional touch So, Mr. Rao, when you talk about scientific handwriting and the professional touch, yeah, can you talk about that a uh, little bit more? What do you mean by the professional touch, and what is the yes. science of handwriting? Since you have co- coined that term, what is the yes. science of handwriting, as you would like to call it? Yes. You would also like to understand it, that a bit. Yeah, yes. Uh, let me tell you. Many people have a misconception that uh, people, those who write very beautiful, are great people, are very positive people, which is not correct. if that is the case mahatma gandhi never had a legible handwriting in his life and people also 
uh, argue with me that uh, see most of the greatest people in the world um, have a very illegible handwriting why do you want us to improve handwriting they say uh, it's a matter of coincidence maybe they are great people and their handwriting is not that legible maybe it's illegible it's a matter of coincidence i sincerely recommend everybody see whether it is uh, a uh, superb or very very artistic or uh, very decorative handwriting or not it should be reasonably uh, good it should be legible it should be clear neat plus it should have certain scientific traits let me tell you what if a person is slanting a letter towards left side they are found as introverts though legible though legibility is found in the handwriting just because the letters are slanted towards left side it shows introversion which is not positive we ask people to slant their handwriting towards right side if it is cursive oh, let me correct myself if it is cursive writing they are doing we sincerely recommend them to make a slant towards right side we call it like forward slant when a letter is slanted forward automatically they become extroverts when the dot on i a small letter i lower case letter i a dot is found very far from the stem they are found with a people they are found like you know people with a less memory skills they are with a less uh, observation capabilities and once you place the dot closer to the eye stem you can enhance your observation skills you can enhance your memory skills you know like this i can keep on telling you, you know when you write a word m by my why is left down it's not positive this person is always focusing on the past they try to construct barriers from presence to past which is wrong so we sincerely you uh, know we we recommend them to extend y towards up like when i was talking about t cross bar it should be balanced when i'm talking about the stem of a t and d there shouldn't be any loop in the stem of t t and d so a beautiful handwriting maybe a physically beautiful handwriting may have a loop in the t stem or d stem because of which they are observed as uh, people those who take the things to the heart they are depressed maybe psychologically you know they are they are feeling low that's why the loop is happening and anyhow i'm teaching a handwriting i'm teaching them to make it little more legible i also add the scientific traits so that they'll also tune their mindset like this we have done lot of research maybe with the spacing people sometimes you know if you have a word with four letters or five letters if you have a word called uh, velocity in between v and e the space is less in between e and l the space is little more if you can see we call it like irregular spacing because of which they fail to maintain healthy long lasting relationships when i ask them to maintain equal spaces at least equal space you know, or comparatively though we are not we can do it like a computer doing at least you know uh, reasonably equal kind of uh, spaces if it is not weird kind of thing they can maintain healthy long lasting relationships in a due course of time so people say we say change your handwriting change your life so i add the scientific part also in my handwriting improvement part that's why my programs are very very unique thank you so much sir for that very elaborate explanation Thank you. and uh, i'm sure a lot of the viewers will definitely take into consideration and think about what you have told them about uh, how the letters develop and how that yeah. the letters reflect the psychological state or vice versa now yes. uh, you mentioned a particular form or definition to be followed while writing the discussion that we had is this true even for indian languages do we have a well, well do we have well defined font scripts for indian languages too oh, i have worked on my mother tongue telugu i have also worked on um, hindi though major training programs uh, happen in english uh, in our academy and people ask us you know 95% of the people ask us for english handwriting improvement uh, programs and only 5% of the people i can say they ask uh, hindi plus telugu but i always uh, gave equal importance to all the three languages of my part uh, i stay in um, southern part of india we have three languages and i have coined a word called the writing skills t h e t for telugu h for hindi and e for english improve the writing skills learn the languages you know when you learn the languages you know for all our uh, 
uh, telugu people i always used to focus on these three languages which has got a, uh, given a wonderful acronym called the the unfortunately i feel very happy that you know my mother tongue has come in the beginning telugu and um, to add it up today is uh, telugu language day actually in andhra pradesh of course so there is a separate day for telangana that is september 9th so we have the two telugu states now so one telugu state is celebrating a telugu language day today uh, and then coming to national language hindi and then international language english so i also teach a way of life first you give a lot of importance to your mother tongue i never talk about telugu i always talk about mother tongue because mother mahatma gandhi used to say three m's mother tongue mother and motherland if you uh, give respect to these three things you know you become a very good personality okay that's why i used to teach this kind of person development also through my uh, writing part telugu hindi english uh, all the three uh, languages we have developed a syllabus based on common strokes and based on basic strokes much before basic strokes i strongly motivate people to develop interest on in writing if you wish to write well 50% of the things are done because most of the students today they don't have willingness to write ha- hand write i can say especially they don't want to write they want to play they want to see w- watch video they want to play video games but coming to handwriting part they literally hate it i can say they get irritated when you ask them to write uh, copywriting books or maybe you know when you ask them to fill up a, a handwriting manually so uh, my my teaching starts first with the motivation as a parent as a teacher you need to motivate your child for handwriting then improve fine motor skills my second part comes to fine motor skills once your hand is comfortable both clockwise and anticlockwise you are ready for handwriting you are physically ready for handwriting though handwriting is a combination of mind and hand so your mind is saying okay to write but your hand is not physically ready so that's why uh, a primary teacher and a mother and a father you know uh, have have to give an effort of uh, motivation and training for the young children to f- have a flexibility in the hand which we call it like fine motor skills then i go to basic strokes when you are good at clockwise anti clockwise lines up or downward vertical horizontal lines lands back slashes a c kind of c kind of spring kind of strokes these are the, you know we have some 10 15 basic strokes we have developed and after that everybody will be ready for handwriting this is the way you know this is how uh, i train people i motivate people on handwriting improvement excellent thank you so much for such a wonderful elaboration now to take the session ahead i would like to invite my friend shitit shetty yeah welcome shitit hello mr shetty hi meer hello mr rao how are you i'm i'm good thank you shitit i request you to take the session thank ahead. you meer so mr rao it was quite interesting listening to your take on handwriting and how it does affect people i'm sure yeah there will be a lot of listeners and viewers who will have some of the other inputs or questions on that yes. personally for me handwriting has always been interesting and uh, i think one of the most uh, critical tools that has helped me improve my handwriting was the foot ruler that my dad had okay so i think that is one contributing factor that has been to me so listening to you i would like to slightly deviate from handwriting to calligraphy okay would you say that there is a difference between regular handwriting and calligraphy and do you also feel that somebody with good handwriting can also yeah. manage to do beautiful calligraphy uh yes it's a it's a very very interesting question and lot many viewers also will be getting little idea uh, with with my answer i believe coming to the answer there is a lot of difference between handwriting and calligraphy handwriting is just a way of life the way you you dress up the way you you behave calligraphy is how you want to you want others to see you how you want to project you, yourself how better you you dress up your attire uh, you, you speak or uh, you know you polish your language skills or other skills that's what is calligraphy and to tell you in the beginning in 1996 i started my academy as nca national calligraphy academy uh, w- was the uh, word and to your surprise i can tell you most of the south indians were not aware of this word called calligraphy in the year 
it was it, it is even surprising to me even today then i had to shift i had to change my academy's name as nha national handwriting academy now and there are two reasons why i have changed it reason number one many people are not aware of uh, calligraphy though i believed it uh, calligraphy is nothing but a beautiful form of uh, handwriting or something the second reason why i have uh, changed calligraphy academy to handwriting academy is i always wanted to make people to write better in their regular way of life in, in their regular lifestyle maybe in the school maybe in the college in the examination paper or when you write a letter to somebody when you write a letter to a newspaper when you write a letter to your relatives uh, or what you write some notes to yourself that is a major part of your life actually which will help you to succeed calligraphy is just a, an art form and i can tell you anybody can learn calligraphy because it's a learnable skill it's not so very great or so very tough or something like that with a little practice of 2 to 3 3 months anybody can uh, practice it is lucrative to you but handwriting is helpful to you in, in to succeed in your life because you need to communicate end of the day 95% of the examinations even today in a developing nation like india are based on handwriting the handwritten based tests are conducted in a country 50% is what you have in your mind and remaining 50% is how you put it on a piece of paper that's why i have changed my academy's name into handwriting academy national handwriting academy i always have a, a, a tell people that handwriting and calligraphy are not uh, two uh, are, are not uh, the same they're two different uh, entities altogether handwriting is for your regular communication purpose calligraphy is to show off i can say maybe you want to wish somebody happy new year happy birthday or uh, you you love somebody's work you want to uh, praise them a special project works for these things you know you can you can learn calligraphy you can always uh, use it to uh, give an additional you know flair to your uh, presentation but basic thing is handwriting and uh, i appreciate a part of your question which was does handwriting help to learn calligraphy it does if you are a calligrapher maybe your handwriting is not that great but if you are a wonderful if you are wonderful at handwriting calligraphy is easy to you i put it in that way sir i would like to beg, differ in certain points because i yeah, consider please. that i have slightly above average handwriting but calligraphy is something okay. that i cannot get i just feel that there is okay. a lot of dedication commitment practice that is so handwriting comes naturally but calligraphy is okay. something that does not come naturally to me and when i look at okay. others okay. i can mm-hmm. see like prasad whom we had for a last session for example i can see the amount okay. of work and practice that he puts into his calligraphy which is beautiful yeah yeah so yeah. while i have slightly good handwriting i don't think calligraphy is my cup of tea okay okay that's it uh that's that, it that's, i would uh, uh, yeah that's finally individual uh, uh, opinion but as a professional what i have seen in majority of the cases is calligraphy has a particular syllabus like a particular format you know you write this stroke yeah. this way you know it it doesn't change so particular right. font if you take like gothic or maybe a spenserian or maybe a particular font you take there is a rule right. there is a particular thing but handwriting there is no rule though your your handwriting teacher maybe your mother maybe your father taught you a particular handwriting in one particular style or a period of time right. it changes because your handwriting is your personality and calligraphy no, never really. changes maybe you improvise your proficiency that's all but you don't change that particular right. letter of a particular font right so there is a syllabus you, there is a particular font yeah right. yeah so Sir. mr rao moving forward is yeah. there certain pens or nibs that you would recommend for somebody looking to improve the handwriting do you think that is also a contributing factor mm, the instruments yes. that a person uses uh, yeah once again you know a pen a weight of the pen size of the nib color of the ink all these things are in you know, a personal matters actually it changes from individual to individual okay. but as a person who who is teaching handwriting for years maybe more than two decades i strongly recommended ink pen fountain pen 
for handwriting improvement i'll tell you the reason when you write with a ball point pen there is a small ball at the tip of the instrument and which is rotating rotating and bringing the ink from back side and putting it forth on the paper and you don't have a proper control on the stroke what you're making it with what you're making on the piece of paper but when right. you write with a fountain pen the beauty you can see it's listening to you and ball point pen is not listening to you you will have to listen to ball point pen and when you're writing with a fountain pen it's perfectly listening to you and you apply a break it it will be active it's implemented and you wanted to make a horizontal stroke such a beautiful fine horizontal stroke or curve or um, reverse curve you, you can make it very very effectively and people said mahatma gandhi wanted to have a rule that you know every citizen of the country should work for military for a year or something like that so i always okay. dream if a school can make fountain pen mandatory at least for one year we handwriting improvement experts will just simply vanish in the world i think most no schools hand- at least during our times our times had our times yeah our opposed- times and pa- our parents times used to have only ink pen and if you can observe there was no handwriting trainer there was no handwriting oh, improvement okay. trainer separately fountain oh, pen was one of the school. trainers okay. <laughs> yeah yeah we our parents and our teachers used to teach us and and things oh. used to happen very very well and uh, now in spite of copywriting books in spite of parents in spite of teachers you need another handwriting improvement trainer also uh, coming to the point right. and i used yes. to you know like a lighter point i used to tell people when ball point pens have come into existence and when most of the people i can say you, i think you will accept you will agree with me 90 to 95% of the people are using ball point pens today right and like and lighter side i used to tell the people are not using pens at all <laughs> not today, using pens at all but, yeah at least you know if you take that 5% or 10% who is using pens from that i can yeah. say majority of the people are using ball point pens and lighter okay. side i used to crack a joke that you know when ball point pens have come to existence my business has become so lucrative people started spoiling handwritings and they have, they have started approaching me i started giving techniques to them so that is a beauty of fountain pen actually so fountain pen can be your handwriting trainer also according to me it's a beautiful relative uh, you can relate your stroke to the mind a beautiful link in between a stroke and mind happens only with fountain pen right so personally what kind of pen and nib combination do you use for your daily i personally uh, uh, use uh, lamy safari is one of my favorite pens actually Uh, okay. i i love it because of this grip you know because one of the uh, topics what i teach to the students is a tripod grasp you use three fingers to hold your writing instrument your middle right. finger goes below the instrument thumb goes on one side maybe left or right according to the right handedness or left handedness and the other side is right. index finger these are the three fingers so when you right. see this you know this is one of the beautiful pens in after pelican i have seen you know pelican and uh, lamy especially safari if you can see there is a groove which you cannot see here in the photograph or video but there is a beautiful groove over here and when you right. hold the writing instrument automatically it fits into hand because as a handwriting improvement trainer i always believed holding writing instruments writing instrument is one of the beautiful points of uh, areas to be focused for handwriting improvement only because right. people or students especially at the age of 3 4 5 years they though just because they're not able to hold their pencil properly ergonomically they spoil handwriting or they don't get the letter properly so that's why i use this this is one of my my favorite pens of course i use uh, five six pens regularly i recommend a medium nib uh, neither very fine nor very broader uh, nibs i recommend a medium nib because you know broader nibs uh, demand uh, quality of the paper also generally in south in, in indian context Actually. we cannot afford a beautiful quality of the paper for uh, daily regular usage right and a very fine pen also is is a little tough for a common man medium size nib you know i prefer somehow personally i feel the finer the nib the more mm-hmm. your handwriting is exposed 
the yes, broader yes, nibs sir. tend to you know cover yeah. a lot of mistakes the finer nibs yeah. tend to yes. expose more of your flaws we have observed, we have observed it psychologically also when you are uh, when your psychology is demanding a finer nib say for, for example personally you like finer nib you are a person who has oh, a like lot broad. of important okay you like broader say finer okay. people you know n- people those who love finer nibs are more patient you know they have more patience level than people those who have used broader nibs broader okay. goes very easily just like that but for fine pens you know for fine nib you need to be very conscious about that and your patience level increase you know psychologically speaking so that might be one character flaw in me but so okay do you feel that using finer nibs will help me with my patience definitely definitely you can try it out 21 days finer nibs i'll take that up so yeah, Mr. most Rao, of the question. most of the japanese say you know, i think if you can, if you can see in the history also japanese most okay. of the japanese use uh, finer nibs okay so mr rao my next question is what books would you recommend to adults who are looking to improve their handwriting and how much practice okay. do you feel does one need to put in to see a discernible change in their own handwriting see first of all everybody has to understand that handwriting is not a subject it's a skill anybody and everybody can improve handwriting it is a learnable skill that's first thing secondly right i have a i have a beautiful acronym which is coined by me it's called a tip t i p tip the first one comes as techniques t for techniques i for interest and p for practice okay when you took birth you didn't know how to eat today you are comfortably eating on your own without anybody support because of these three things only somebody gave you beautiful techniques you had a terrific interest and you have practiced without leaving it and any skill and every skill can be mastered only with these three things according to me so handwriting is no exception so firstly believe that handwriting can be changed secondly try to find some good techniques you asked about the books i i don't specifically tell about the books maybe a book maybe a person maybe a video which is giving you a technique that's first important thing secondly okay. you should have interest and thirdly practice and somebody wants more things you know sir not three can you give me 10 ideas to improve my handwriting okay i'll give you 10 first one is techniques second one is interest third one is practice fourth one is practice fifth one is practice sixth one is practice you want 20 you keep on practice okay. you, you you add the word practice you know for all these things if you want 100 okay. ideas for handwriting first two will not vary and you know first two will vary techniques interest and all the remaining uh, 98 are uh, practice so, so practice is that important today we are in a world where everything is ready made everything is you know a, a coming in a click uh, away that's why we don't have a time or a personal feeling to practice so once you practice with interest once once these uh, techniques are proven professional automatically and anybody everybody can improve handwriting and one should be very careful with the books if it is book unfortunately very very less uh, professional books are existing in the market most of the books are designed by a layman they are not designed by professionals and very very unfortunately most of the copywriting books if you see they just take a font they print it give it to the student give it to the school management and management without any without any awareness they simply implement it in the schools which is wrong i can say it's it's not wrong actually it's a sin giving a book in which font is there for handwriting practice is a sin one has to be very very careful about that especially a school management and especially a parent should look at the book what you're giving to your son what you're giving to your student the book should be specifically designed in a handwritten then you take a scan you you scan it or maybe you take a photocopy or you you multiply it it should be understood the letter should be understood by a professional and it should be written um, manually then it should be printed in the book that kind of book any kind of book is okay okay so mr rao that was really interesting i would request pradeep to join us now yeah i think he'll have some interesting questions for you too yeah, yeah. Hello, Mr. Pradeep. Hi, Pradeep. Hello, Mr. Rao. Good evening. Good evening. Hi, Pradeep. And, uh, hi. So, Mr. Rao, I've been listening to you 
a few okay. very interesting thoughts have been shared by you and uh, i think that Thank you. gives us a lot to think about actually especially to do with uh, your views on psychology and writing you yeah. the point that you know if one changes their handwriting that might actually change the way they think so true that that is something to consider and maybe think a bit more about but uh, because world believed in a statement called handwriting is not handwriting it is brain writing okay the whole world believed this concept and one it's it's vice versa you change your handwriting you change your uh, uh, behavior and has this been observed in practice it's it's been observed in practice and it's been observed scientifically also and lot of governments uh, have uh, proven it and as there is a question a document examination uh, strongly uh, believes that handwriting analysis uh, can be taken into consideration to brand a person as a thief or you know we can leave him as something like that so this is a science so when a person can be read from handwriting a same person can be tuned positively by changing certain strokes in handwriting interesting concept yeah something i was not aware of but uh, moving on to another very important question that i have been thinking about and i am sure most of us would like to know is that okay. uh is it ever too late for somebody to start improving their handwriting i understand there's a lot of practice involved but is there okay. also a threshold beyond which say a person cannot learn new things especially you know to do with handwriting since it yeah you know it is around motor skills so. yeah uh, it is nothing to do with the age though you you have something to do with the fine motor skills or uh, fine movements all these things the right. uh, uh, eldest uh, person who has changed handwriting totally in my programs was a 73 year old lady wow. i still remember her her name mrs mary periara who was a principal of johnson grammar school around 15 years ago she personally told me after attending my workshops malikarjun it's amazing i i i can see lot of change in my handwriting mm-hmm. at the age of 73 uh, she if she can change anybody and everybody can change at any age age is not a thing once again i repeat you know, once again i tell you people i tell people that techniques interest practice are the three major things to change handwriting at any age you can improve handwriting great uh the flip side of the same question sir what is the age for a child to start focusing on changing or improving them? yeah this is a very very valid question and i appreciate this question mr pradeep uh, because unfortunately we are influenced by the western world and our children started moving to schools at the age of 2 now yeah. maybe be, be in little before 2 years also they go to a place called crash then they started something like pre primary school even today last year let me tell you i was in a place called helsinki which is a capital of finland correct even now this is a rule over there it's it's a condition over there that if you finish in 6 years you come to my school till 5 years you complete 5 years no school so unfortunately uh, there is a bad system i can say bad uh, system in uh, now going on called you know crash and pre primary school crash is okay because when both the parents are working there is there should be somebody who you know who has to take care of a child and that care if professionally the care is given that's that lad uh, you know for a child to grow up in a very professional way also i strongly recommend crash but they almost consider preschool as a school like a boy is going to uh, attend a civil service training program and another boy is going for a lkg and parents of two families consider both almost the same way right and coming to your question handwriting it should be started approximately at the age of 4 4 and a half years unfortunately we are doing at the age of 3 wherein people are students you know children at the age of 3 are not good at fine motor skills they can't move their hand see when you when you look at them they can't eat properly they start from the nose they they end at the at the chin so they're not able to even look at the mouth properly and you can't ask expect them to make a circle properly at the age of 3 without uh, a proper fine motor skills i'll add a beautiful point now today recently you know off late i can say 
15, 20 years or in a two, three decades, not, not uh, much beyond that. These two, three decades, if you can observe in the society, children are pampered a lot. Around two, three decades ago, children were not pampered. So they used to uh, let the children do their own activities on their own. Today, your driver has to work for your child also. Your assistant has to carry the child's children's bag. And somebody is there to feed them. At the age of seven, at the age of 10, I see in a place called you know, South India, at the age of uh, 15, 16 years, he is attending a plus one, plus two, just because he has to complete 60 to 70 problems uh, by tomorrow. Mother is feeding such a bad thing, I see. Okay. And everybody has to remember that pampered children have a bad handwriting. If a child is able to eat chapati on his own, on her own, if a child is able to open the zip and close the zip, if a child is able to put the buttons and open the buttons, they'll be good at handwriting. So one has to start with the uh, things like, you know, they should enjoy, children sh should enjoy. So when they start doing their own, you know, they, they take their own bath, they dress up, they eat, they take care of their, their own tools, toys. So by the time four, four and a half years, five years, so the hand is good, flexible, clockwise, anti-clockwise movements are able to reach from mind to hand. Then you give them, that's good. And I can tell, tell you, there are so many students, those who are writing good at age of three also, but you know, they were all forced. They were forced or maybe the fine motor skills are good for them. Maybe the other way around. That, that way I look at it. Interesting. So it is preferred that the, the, the younger children, especially, do their own work. You should naturally. Yeah, yes, help them yes. Them. Very important. That will not only teach them handwriting, that's also that will also teach them the way of life. How to sit, how to stand, how to cycle, you know, how to manage your own things is a way of life, actually. Sure. When you are doing their works, psychologically, you are doing something negative to them. I, I get your point. So yeah. my, the second part of this question sort of covered my next question. Okay. Uh, see, you have shared with us that you have taught so many students, lakhs of students, and you conduct mm. regularly conduct courses at schools and colleges. Yeah. So how does your focus vary when you're teaching school students to improve their handwriting vis-a-vis -vis the mm. college students? Uh, of course, I go to college very seldom. M majority of my training programs happen in the schools or maybe if participants or if students are joining in my uh, program, my in-house programs, uh, and uh, no, very fortunately, school-going students are observed in you know, most of the times. Yeah. Not exact, not immediately after uh, school, not plus one, plus two or something like that. Once again, I get a student who is going to do their CA final uh, civil services they are writing, you know, where handwriting play a, a major role. Um, yeah. To my credit, I have more than a dozen of uh, students, those who are qualified in civils because of handwriting also. Uh, that was a major issue for them. Even today, they need to write 3,000 words in a span of uh, two and a half to three hours. So I teach them how to write legible handwriting and at the same time, how to maintain speed and all. So in between that category intermediate, we call, you know, maybe plus one, plus two, graduation, undergraduation. These people, they don't come to me or we don't train them because they are least bothered about their handwriting. When it comes to school part, you know, high school part, I can say uh, uh, middle school, high school till 14, 15 years, children, majority, 90% of my training programs uh, happen to them. Because that's what is a need from the society, you know. Uh, I, I don't say I can't train them. So the kind of people, uh, anybody making movies or writing books or something like that, you know, they work on research. Whatever is required, they deliver. So I deliver to the school students because they need it much more. Yeah, but uh, suppose you had to train a class of school students and college school students simultaneously. How would okay. your methodology of teaching change in that sense? Uh, that was the very answer the question. Yeah, yeah. One thing, you know, I'm blessed that, you know, very fortunately, the syllabus doesn't change to me. ABCD is ABCD right. for everybody. If it is a physics I'm teaching, I have to keep both the people in my mind, you know, right. uh, what kind of chemistry or physics or geography uh, I have to teach them. But, you know, very fortunately, I'm, I'm really blessed in that uh, issue. Uh, sometimes, you know, when I give an open advertisement or when I invite uh, people to join my program, 
i see student of uh, 8 9 year old and at the same time 60 to 65 year old child uh, people also teachers or maybe principals maybe retired people all the combination and i see, majority of the my program majority of my programs went on like this actually when i conduct in my program in my office when i go to school i don't very uh, age group you know very very big uh, because i have to teach Actually. the uh, i have to give i have to give more importance to the instruction also uh, i have to yeah. keep their um, uh, like a sitting tolerance and all these things into consideration uh, maybe fifth and sixth standard together that's all ninth and tenth standard together in another group that, that way but it doesn't matter age doesn't matter because the syllabus is same the the content is same only you need to be just well trained uh, to just the board of instruction which would very from. yes that, that that's it you need to be a better trainer yeah. than a better handwriting expert you need to train yourself to handle them together because the content sure. is same sure. thank you thank you for that i think yeah. we will move on to another question which is close to the hearts of us all our viewers okay yeah it yeah. is fountain pens so you already shared <laughs> with us that you prefer fountain pens for yes. uh, your own use as well as you recommend fountain pens for improving handwriting yes. could you share a bit about your collection and your preference of pens and nibs though you have already touched upon that? yeah when when i have come to uh, this um, pen exhibition which was conducted by vishal ji last two years ago for the first time i was expecting some pen stalls uh, no i was just moving around when i've seen your stall it was a most interesting thing to me and in my heart i was appreciating you Uh, though i was not able to express you much i met you in your stall fpai fountain yeah. pen association that's amazing man what is what kind of guys these are very beautiful appreciable thing why is that i did not do so far though i had these kind of similar kind of uh, views but i was thinking i was super excited that day and um, when i have uh, joined you as a member the people surrounding me were uh, really annoyed why is that you are spending money for you know, to become a member in fpai what money man they charging nothing you know it's a combination uh, they doing and i i still remember you know i have to show you this like a pen case what what i have received that day which is uh, from fpai and uh, we have to start with this particular pen this is a waterman pen louis waterman is a first person who who gave who contributed a lot uh, uh, to the fountain pen this is one of the fountain pens i love to use this is by waterman waterman uh, pen and uh, with your permission can i show a few of the pens i'm using please uh, sir please. Yeah. i would like to show you you know <laughs> one by one there's a collection like i like the pelican as i as I, as i told you i like pelican because of this grip when you hold it there is a beautiful triangle shape very few pens come with this idea called triangle body so this is called a triangle uh, body this triangle pen uh, i loved it as a handwriting improvement trainer also because this is one of the topics i teach to the people uh, to have a proper tripod grasp we call it as a tripod grasp yeah. so this is a pelican pen i use and uh, another pelican pen of course this is one of the most uh, popular uh, instruments i carry and you can see this clip also changed in color yeah. <laughs> i i used it uh, very very well around more than 10 years i've been using i this is like a nostalgia to me this is one of the beautiful fountain pens by camlin i have used in my childhood when i Most was 6 and 7 uh, yeah we have used, especially this particular pen i i don't know the name whether they have a particular name for this particular style or not uh, one of the beautiful camlin pens i have used at the age of uh, 9 or 10 i think when i was 9 10 5th 6th standard i still remember two students called rafi and yu srinu in my place in my school seniors they were using this pen and these these two students were very popular for their handwriting for their beautiful handwriting i was thinking ki because they are using this pen their handwriting is good uh, because i was said this is one of the nostalgia and i i always get uh, nostalgic feelings when i show this yes. pen all of us have that oh that's that's good to know uh, now as i was showing this one of the pens uh, designed with a combination of uh, um, harley davidson and uh, what and uh, waterman i believe this is a beautiful uh, fountain pen it writes very well it, i i prefer uh, 
uh, especially for that particular pen, I prefer a thin uh, nib. And the beauty of this cross pen is when you see a body, when you see a pen together as a whole, you will see it like a ballpoint pen. That's so thin, it looks like it's, it gives an impression like a ballpoint pen because most of the people use ballpoint pens from cross. And when you open it, it opens like a, I can say, like a Jurassic Park, you know, a huge nib. In the, 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 you don't expect this big nib when the pen is seen closed. That's one beautiful thing, you know, I liked uh, for uh, cross pen. This is one of the beautiful cross pens uh, uh, I have collected. And this is another cross uh, fountain pen I'm using. Hope you all, you all can see it. This is so another Mr. cross pen. Mr. Hari Balakrishna has uh, identified your Tamlin. It's a 36R. That's great. 36R. That's Beautiful. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Uh, Hari Mr. Hari is Ji. extremely knowledgeable about pens. Wow. I'll have to note it down because without knowledge, you know, I, I used to write with that. This is one of the Sheffer pens. Uh, I preferred a little broader nib for this. It's for a, whenever I'm in a hurry, I prefer this pen because it goes very smoothly, very faster handwriting. You know, for uh, people who has to write very fast, you know, I prefer this pen because this pen comes with a, a broader nib. It writes very fastly, as I've, I've shown it already. This is one of my, uh, I, I use it very frequently, Lamy Safari. Yes, uh, and um, this is another uh, pen by same Harley Davidson, fountain pen by Harley Davidson. This is also in collaboration with the Waterman, I believe. And you can see this, uh, there's a symbol called, uh, there's a symbol like, uh, you, I am sorry, there's a light glow. Yeah, Harley Davidson. There symbol, are two or three pens in that line. In that line. Yeah, two, three pens. And I have collected two out of three, I have collected two. Uh, and... Uh, Coming to this part, uh, this is, there is a beautiful pen called Monte Verde. This is also a good pen. I think you can I recognize by the clip because most of the pens are recognized by their clips or maybe by their uh, small emblem kind of thing. This is a beautiful Monte Verde pen. And this brand is again um, Pierre Cardin SD signature pen. This is also, you know, this is a bit heavy to write, uh, heavy to hold. This has, this is, you know, big, huge uh, weight. The weight is a little, that, that is also a good point, you know, for most of the people like a pen with a heaviness. This is another pen from Pierre Cardin. This is one of the most commonly available. And I recommended this pen for most of the people because this also, it also comes with a little broader nib and easy flow. The flow is very beautiful. It, it, it costs approximately 100 rupees, I believe. It's one of the beautiful fountain pens I recommended uh, for most of the students also, uh, and even for elders also. Uh, this is one of the good uh, fountain pens. And there is another brand called uh, Schneider. This is a Schneider pen I'm using. I believe they do entry Schneider level. Is, yeah, yeah. Entry level pen. And, Schneider uh, also does a, a wonderful glass bottle of cartridges, if I'm not mistaken. Cartridge, yes, so yes. Yeah. cartridges are sold in a nice glass bottle. Yeah, that bottle, you know, many people keep that bottle even after <laughs> using, the, using the cartridges. That's a lovely bottle they've made. This is our uh, Indian pride lotus pen. <laughs> I bought it uh, in his house. I, I When I've come to Mumbai, I've, uh, I've Arunji. I visited his home. Arunji's home. Arun Singhi was very, very kind to receive us at, the age of, at, at around 9, 9.30 p.m. Uh, I visited his home. So they served me dinner <laughs> along with yeah. this pen, you know, uh, dinner was free. <laughs> with the pen. Though, uh, of course, he was not uh, very much interested in selling the pens, but uh, he was interested in meeting a person who is interested in pens. So he's a very, Arunji is a very kind gentleman. Very, very, very kind. Uh, not only Arunji, the oh. Mrs. Arunji is also a very, very kind right. lady. And I was blessed to meet them that day uh, because I was in a rush to move back to Hyderabad the next day morning. I, I forced him to gave me an appointment in the evening. So this is one of the beautiful uh, Lotus pen. I, I strongly recommend Lotus pens to uh, viewers, you know, they, he, because, you know, a lot of hard work and love and affection. With, with love and affection, he makes pens uh, more yes. than you know, uh, compared to other manufacturers. Like, uh, that's what I observed in him. So when I was abroad, I bought this pen. I don't know what's this pen. This is not, uh, this is a, not a branded pen. I liked it because of the size. 
this is a very short pen you know if you can see this is very very short but still when you open it it looks like a normal pen when you, when you open it and you put the cap at the back side it looks like a normal pen size that's what i liked in this pen uh, i bought it in um, china i don't know people doesn't like that word now i believe i don't know <laughs> i bought it in china this is one of the beautiful pens and uh, this is another uh, shaffer pen shaffer basic level pen though it's a basic level shaffer uh, it's it's it writes very very well it comes with different nibs i believe it's a basic model but it's a beautiful shaffer model and i have a basic uh, parker model parker i have uh, got many parkers this is one of the basic parker models and to show you something interesting out of my collection i have four pens you know which are called uh, mm, antique or i can say vintage pens this is one pen for my pride of collection though i cannot compare my collection with yours this is for my pride i have collected in mumbai recently which which comes with a very rare old uh, piston uh, kind of thing you know for the barrel back side of the barrel you have a piston you just push it your, your ring comes out you know after pushing you just leave it your ring is uh, taken to the barrel this is one of the vintage pens i have collected this is by parker very few people are aware of this particular parker pen so this is one vintage collection i have done and recently i have collected another shaffer pen which is very very old shaffer very old very few people have it it seems so if you can see that these two colors differ because these two doesn't uh, belong to the same same pen so the barrel or maybe this 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 is from different pen the per, the person who has um, sold me collected from two different pens and made it like one single pen this is one of the old uh, shaffer pens thank and you so much vintage, actually right? mr rao mr rao mr uh, rao i'm sorry sir, but i please. just have to stop you there because we are kind of yeah, running please. out of time uh, yeah, we'll yeah, now please. move on to the uh, next please. question uh, yeah. so the next question is basically about whether uh, and what you think how yeah. the associations like fountain pen association of india can help at yeah. the fountain pen hobby and what do you think uh, they can do what is the role that you think that you can see us play in the fountain pen community in india yeah, yeah the idea what you have conceived gives maximum answer to your question itself uh, your uh, the, the think uh, the thing what you have conceived before you started this academy was very very wonderful to promote uh, font and pens what i have in my mind is uh, for the people institutions organizations like you is we need to work on schools especially and we have to work on writing instrument manufacturers we need to have a kind of research and take this research to the uh, manufacturers and ask them to give a kind of you know nice price nice promotion like you know brand ambassadors can be used to promote fountain pen say for example if you can use amita bachchan if he if he is telling that i was using fountain pen or something like that if you can take a, a, a president of the country or maybe a greatest scientist is telling about fountain pen i was using this fountain pen and now you can use it something like that uh, but still you know people are using people are also coming out and these are all the pens you know i wanted to show all these pens come around 40 50 rupees in indian currency now like hauser reynolds flair all these pens are making beautiful fountain pens all these pens doesn't cost more than 50 rupees these pens this is one good idea still if you can tell the people it's not only price if you can tell a common student the advantages of fountain pen if you can pitch a principle if you can tell them the beautiful idea of fountain pen that way it works in a huge way from um, i don't know maybe less than 2% of the people are using uh, fountain pens today i believe i don't know what's our what so what of our goal is to spread the awareness about fountain pens sir but uh, yes, unfortunately yes. it is a very long play to reach students in schools and i yeah, hope, uh, hope that we are unfortunately at this point of time we don't really have the pull with uh, institutions ahead I wish we could get Amita, but then he will charge crores and crores to speak for us. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so anyway, this is just example. Yeah. Yes, yes. So thank you so much, sir, sir for answering all these thank questions you. all this time. And uh, Pradeep and I will now uh, take a back seat, and I will now ask uh, Subodh and Sudhir to both come on the screen, 
and take the session ahead. Thank you so much for. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hello, sir. How are you? Hi, Mr. Bad. Hello, hello, Mr. Sudhir. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. good. I'm good. Mr. Rao Sudhir here. Mr. Sudhir, good evening. Yeah. So, uh, very interesting session so far. Uh, it was very nice to hear your thoughts on handwriting and uh, you. how you were saying. In fact, I have put one or two of the questions in okay. uh, in the uh, box itself, the comments box. Because when okay. you were talking, maybe we can just ju jump right to it. My first question yeah. was that uh, uh, you said parents and teachers uh, are mm. the ones who should start developing the child's handwriting. Okay. Yeah. Uh, now I have a daughter. She is in the ninth standard, and uh, from okay. the time she started school, I mm. have seen her. It was slightly different in my son's case. At that time, the teachers were, in my opinion, slightly better. But okay. in this case, I see that the teachers and most of the parents that we meet are themselves not acquainted with writing. I mean, they just write. They, they have no idea of whether they are writing cursive, whether they are writing any other kind mm. of cursed writing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. So we have no idea about it. How can we expect such parents and such teachers? And teachers is probably the worst part because uh, in schools, teachers are also not able to write cursive or you know sometimes yeah. not even able to write. How yeah. can we uh, uh, how can we reconcile that? Okay, okay. See, you don't have to teach them handwriting, sir. As I said already, if you teach them how to take care of their own activities, if you can make them to do their uh, activities on their own, okay, fifty to sixty percent of the things regarding handwriting are done, because most of the people fail to write well because of poor fine motor skills or poor movements of the hand. Because it, as I said, pampered children are not able to move their hand very properly. When you go deep into the definition of handwriting, handwriting is an externalization of the vibrant activity which is going on already inside your mind. So your hand is just a physical tool which is receiving signals from here through all these nerves, vessels, in veins, all these things. And you know they're executing, their fingers are executing finally. Physically, they're executing. So hand is not writing, actually. Brain is writing. Your hand is a tool, a physical tool, which is uh, used to hold your pen or marker or chalk, piece of chalk or something like that. So if you can make a child, even a, if for that matter, I can tell you, even an illiterate parents can teach children how to improve their handwriting. So if, you're, if their brought up is well-mannered, you have taught them handwriting. You're brought up, you, what, what your grandmother, what your grandfather has done, if you can do it to your, to your children now, you don't have to look back. They, they're, they're ready to write. That, so, sir, going by that logic, yeah. actually, uh, that whatever goes on in the brain is what the hand comes out in the hand. Uh, it looks mm -hmm. like not much is going on in the brains in the first place because not a <laughs> okay. lot of people okay. do any kind of writing. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. So, what do you want to take this question? Yeah, so Suman is asking, uh, yeah. why don't we all share our writing samples and Dr. Rao can tell us if we can still improve. I can, <laughs> yes, yes, I can, I can do that. I can do that. Yeah. I, I love to yeah. do that. Yeah, so yes. Suman, you can, you can share your sample with him, yes. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, a more can... practical approach. It's a more <laughs> yes. practical approach, yeah. That's true. So this is a very interesting uh, question. Uh, Comment question: The psychology and character identification of persons may okay. slowly disappear as the use of pen is reducing day by day for writing. Yeah. So since speeches are converting into writing text, basically text to speech, he's referring to text yeah. to speech. It's so, true. so what what would you like to say on this? Will will uh, you know? I don't know. Psychology and character identification actually disappear if we lose. Uh, the importance or the regular use of handwriting do you think okay so? uh, see it's called science, science of handwriting analysis called graphology which is uh, used to identify a psychological traits of a writer this is one of the tools you can use to judge a mind of a person see somebody tells you from other area also 
so just by losing a touch with the pen you don't have to you, you know you can't say that uh, you lost a psychological trait or you lost in touch with the psychological trait or something like that and coming to the major part uh, that is stanford university recently around 2 3 years ago has done a, an extensive research and said that please do not forget to write though you have nothing to write on a piece of paper please try to write something at least 5 to 10 minutes a day because it will not only uh, help you to improve handwriting it will also help you to enhance your mental abilities it will help you to improve your memory it will help you to improve your concentration level it will help you to um, build up long lasting relationships uh, aesthetic thing it's it's a beautiful thing actually so it says that when you write on a piece of paper instead of typing on a qwerty keyboard see when you need it you have to do it if i say that you know tomorrow morning i am coming to mumbai please come to airport well it i cannot write a letter to you you know handwritten letter is not possible i have to text it those things are okay technologically they we are doing wonders whole world is experience experiencing wonders with the technological enhancement that's that's beautiful along with all those things according to stanford university also please do not forget to write i strongly recommend everybody to write something on a piece of paper because it's not only uh to it's not just to communicate your ideas it's not just to score marks at your examinations it's your personality so when you are in touch with your handwriting you are in touch with your uh, uh, feelings you can portray yourself as okay. a beautiful personality also yeah. yeah interesting very very well answered interesting thank you so again again another question from suman sir of uh, sudhir you want to take this one yeah it actually applies to me also so let me take this <laughs> okay okay so what he said for 40 year olds trying to change their handwriting in addition to practice uh, are there any other kind of hand or finger exercises that uh, would go a long way in helping uh, because uh, he is not uh, comfortable with the conventional tripod grip i use the tripod grip and my handwriting is still nothing to boast about okay. so okay yeah, that something yeah. i would also be mm-hmm. interested see tripod grasp or tripod grip is one of the factors to improve handwriting and if you see in in states and especially in america something like that they hold it like this and there yeah. are there are so many people those who hold only with the two fingers they don't bring the third one and some people carry with all the four or five fingers you know like this so though handwriting doesn't affect because you know a calligrapher is holding like this and doing a doing a magic on a piece of paper that's one of the factors but for a regular handwriting to match legibility and speed worldwide neurophysicians uh, physiotherapists or maybe ergonomics strongly recommend a tripod grasp that's one of the factors actually okay. to maintain both legibility and speed for a longer time once you change tripod grasp you know you do like this you do like this and you do like this you will not be able to write longer though you are able to write legible beautiful it will go only for a limited time it will not go longer so that's why ergonomically you have to follow this tripod grasp it will definitely certainly help you and a, a school going college going student also and coming to the exercises you have you can take it in two parts one physically for the hands maybe you know you touch your finger you know thumb to all the tips of the remaining five finger, remaining four fingers you keep touching this it is one of the beautiful exercise even post operation many physiotherapists also suggest this and another thing is you rotate your hand clockwise and anti clockwise like this without a pen in your hand only hand part not the remaining part not the oh piche wala nahi hai just this part should be rotated clockwise anti clockwise both the hands though you are not writing with the second hand we recommend to both the hands because you know you cannot do or to one particular hand and coming to another exercise it it, it comes to a, a food also vegetarian food is highly recommended early dinner is highly recommended for a good hand writing you cannot use more spicy food oil you have to reduce all these things matter in hand writing also when you are lighter sattvic ahar bolte hai na when you have more sattvic ahar your writing is definitely you know good not only legible you will apply bit less pressure on a piece of paper with all these things so that you are you can manage longer text and second part of the exercise is coming to the handwriting part you just practice anti clockwise circle clockwise circle 
in different sizes on a four ruled paper you you touch both top and bottom red color lines first then in between the two blue lines uh, next both the directions secondly make a spring anti clockwise make a spring clockwise then cursive handwriting x hot aina both clockwise anti clockwise together half is clockwise half is anti clockwise then you go clockwise you go anti clockwise like a column bolte aina muggu such as a kind of thing these are the strokes these are all exercise which will certainly help to improve handwriting to improve one's handwriting very interesting. interesting so i th- this is a question again coming <clears throat> from personal experience uh, which is okay. is a person's handwriting consistent or does it change with writing instrument because what happens is i usually write okay. with fountain pens uh, okay. sometimes out of necessity if we are in office and we have to quickly we are was sitting in a conference room where i have not carried my pen or something like that i have to use a ballpoint or i also okay. take lectures so if i am mm-hmm. uh, for example writing on a white board with a white board marker which is a completely different thing i have the same grip okay. but my handwriting okay. is vastly different in these uh, conditions uh, right. how, okay. how does that happen or why does that happen it's a very beautiful question and i put it this way if your handwriting is consistent over a period of time you have some problem actually okay that can be that can be considered as a problem it cannot be consistent it should not be consistent in in fact i don't say that once you write legible once you write illegible you write uh, 10% legible 60% legible 90% legible or something it it varies legibility varies but okay. it should not be consistent because handwriting is a reflection of your mood it is outcome of your personality it is definitely an outcome of your psychology if i like a person if i write a line about him my handwriting is obviously beautiful comparatively re- compared to my regular handwriting i write little better and if you offer me a lakh rupees for the same sentence i will definitely write more beautiful in the next one minute and then a next minute itself so it cannot be consistent it will not be consistent by being not consistent is not wrong but don't make it illegible that's it So is there any book or site Vikrant Gadkari wants to know that you can recommend for learning and I'm assuming he means learning handwriting Okay okay there are quite good books I was talking about this uh, in in as a part of another question I was answering it See more than a question I strongly believe in a professional technique maybe it comes from book or comes from a teacher or comes from a trainer or coming from your grandfather a technique should be very professionally given because most of the copywriting books are not professionally made by copywriting not not they are not made by handwriting okay. experts actually they are just made by somebody who is writing good so i don't consider beautiful handwriting as a number one handwriting i consider a legible a uh, consistent or uh, maybe with a good spacing with a good slant with a good uh, shape of a letter good joinings this is a good writing you don't have to make it so beautiful like a calligrapher regular handwriting cannot be you, you don't have to make it like a calligraphy but a technique should be very professionally given for example i'll quote it in less than 1 minute if you teach a letter c to your child from c you can teach a properly small letters when i'm coming to lower case letters you can teach small letter d properly g properly q properly o properly out of these five letters if you change the c part of these letters your handwriting is gone case as long as you are able to maintain the c part of these five letters a d g q o properly your handwriting is beautiful it's it's reasonably good and coming to the two letters called l and t except a horizontal line remaining part should be same n and h second part the right part what you make should be having a same kind of width see sometimes when you write n it's very wide sometimes you write h it's thinner so your handwriting is gone case the basic quality is missing so with these professional touch touches you know or kind of you know good easy techniques that's what is a remote control i always give an example of remote control there's a lot of science in the operation of remote control you don't have to know how remote control is uh, is working so finally what you need is to change the volume and channel uh, at a click so like that a, a father a teacher a mother an elderly person a trainer should think technique should be so easy it should be answering to the point it should be effective 
those those things will help interesting uh pradeep is asking uh, a question why do younger children sometimes write mirror images is it normal for 4 5 year old i oh, i think okay. uh, yeah sorry go it's all together a separate uh, branch sir it is called dysgraphia d y s g r a p h i a dysgraphia is a developmental writing disorder it is a poor coordination between mind and hand it's it's a beautiful science called dysgraphia a person with this problem is called dysgraphic dysgraphics are okay they don't have to do anything with a success or something like that thomas alva edison einstein had this problem called dyslexia dysgraphia dyslexia is a reading problem dysgraphia is a writing problem this is a direct question related to dysgraphia dysgraphia can be easily answered can be fixed very very easily you have to go to the internet and see the solutions of dysgraphia pat on the back sit in front of them you write a mirror image like if you want to teach them b you give a line and write a bulb like this same thing the child is doing sitting uh, opposite to you b and d reversals you write ask them to write three they write reverse you ask them to write a they write reverse c and then start like this so they are comfortable with the reverse because mind is sending instruction but it, the coordination is lacking actually psychologically it happens because of various reasons when a father or mother is shouting at the home maybe a premature delivery maybe cerebral palsy cp so many reasons are identified but a solution is there it's a science if it is a severe right you and me we all had this problem sir around 8 9 years automatically it will get rectified it's not to be very seriously worried about if if it goes beyond 9 years or 10 years an academic counselor is to be met you know you have to see a person called a professional uh, psychological counselor they will give you the solution okay so that kind of wraps up the questions that we had from the audience uh, it's been a wonderful session uh, thank you so That's much great. for sharing your experience sharing uh, so much about handwriting i mean uh, for me personally at least it has been a Sir. revelation that there is so much behind handwriting uh, that uh, if i write differently at different mm. times it's because i'm probably messed up in my head in some way okay. so uh, pretty interesting i i will just request uh, everyone to be back on screen now if we can get them back and uh, we have a small ritual uh, if you don't mind yeah. uh, what we yes. do is we have a quick look at what pens we have inked for the week yeah yeah, yeah what yeah. pens we are using Please. so uh, before yeah, so that, Sudhir, i have i have i have one question from my end so okay, I, okay. i am a i am a right handed writer okay uh, okay and i have been wanting to teach myself to write with my left hand don't ask me why just you know okay okay <laughs> yeah so so any tips uh, how, how can a right handed person switch to the left hand beautiful sir you, you have given a fantastic end to this program beautiful beautiful see it's called ambidextrity a person who is using both the hands with equal ease is called ambidextrity and the person is called ambidextrous getting a thought of writing with a second hand is highly appreciable sir please do that everybody and anybody above 16 17 year age please don't do it to the small children it will affect their uh, uh, inferior it will affect their confidence it will affect uh, it will make them to stammer also you cannot change handedness before 15 years most of the parents without awareness you know they try to change handedness at the age of 4 or 5 because more, both the parents are right handed and the son or daughter is started uh, he started writing with the left hand they forcibly try to change it and which is not correct they should not change but you and me we can do it because right part of the body is controlled by left part of the brain left part of the brain is controlling your right right body so when you are a right handed guy your left part of the brain is functioning active stimulated all these neurons are stimulated and when you are changing handedness this part of the brain is also getting active so what you finally what are you doing is you are getting a coordination between both the brains and it will definitely help you you will become a super power in whatever you are doing there is a beautiful association called uh, ambidextrous society i am also a member of that it is highly appreciable 
you can do it and i'll quickly tell you how how you can do that firstly don't do it with the handwriting firstly try to do with the daily activity like uh, key open your key and uh, you know lock it unlock it put a bolt of your door try to do with the second hand you are a right handed guy you do with the left hand try to put your bolt try to carry certain things try to take a glass of water shift it to another glass try to take a glass of water shift it to your bottle then bottle of water to another bottle shift it to the second shift, shift it with the second hand so like this try to do it and then slowly do with the basic strokes don't start with the letters in the beginning itself after these exercises after second or third week do a circle vertical line horizontal line slash backslash all the basic strokes you practice and then slowly you do it and after 21 days start writing the letters within 2 to 3 months you can be well versed with the second hand also and you will become a proper ambidextrous thanks thanks a lot for that uh, i i'll i'll try <laughs> let's see yeah. you can thanks. you can do that we all can do that i have tried it and i i got it i am an ambidextrous now fantastic sorry so coming back to our pen check yeah yeah so subodh why don't so, you go first yeah okay so uh, the last few days i have been carrying uh, the air mail i think this is the 75 okay. jt with a uh, okay flex net from sunai okay yeah that's that's the only pen i have been carrying currently it's inked with uh, i think uh, it's the noodlers and yatam thread so who's next i'll go next uh, i got three new pens inked this year a lot last of the lot of the pens last week were done so the first is the winsung 699 i believe the 823 chinese copy surprisingly good nib on this it has been worked by our resident nib master sudhir as well and uh, this one's got the edelstein mandarin uh, the second pen is a uh, custom 92 with a beautiful soft medium nib and this has got the kwz vistula walk over vistula line third one i ink is uh, the pro gear with a naginata togi medium nib this one's got okay. okuya great so did yeah sure so i haven't really inked any pens uh, during the week i was supposed to i am planning to do it tomorrow but then i do have eight pens inked so i've been using them also so the first one i want to show again i had shown this a couple of weeks back this is uh, okay. the cartier diabolo uh, again pretty nice one uh, this has a lovely medium nib and uh, i think this is inked with uh, colorworks uh, colorworks proxima is a lovely blue black okay. ink which i i really really like so this is one uh, pen and the other one actually yeah let me show this one this is uh, it's a lotus prototype pen it's a lotus it's okay. called cobalt okay again uh, this pen is made of a blue colored resin which you can probably see uh, the yeah. pen is actually translucent in a way this material arun ji had got uh, uh, i think just for about maybe one or two pens so he made just one or two and i was lucky to get one of these this is inked with uh, dayton blue black which is one of my daily use inks so these are my two pens mm -hmm. for this week chitaj you go next so i have my regular work pens what i inked up today was the pelican 101 yeah in the brilliant red this is inked up with the lamy crystal series azurite the purple color ink it has a lovely double broad nib with the vintage design i am not sure if you can see that but yeah so i love it because it's a nice pocket pen that i can carry on my shirt pocket mr rao yes uh, uh, this is uh, one pen i got it as a gift from one of the friends one of the expensive pens from momla i don't know what's the name of it uh, you should people should be able to give me a name so this is one beautiful i think it's a 
uh, looks like the greta limited, garbo if i mistaken limited edition it's uh, after a lady uh, yeah greta garbo i think yes, i'm not sure yes yes yeah this is one of the moblas i have and lastly i have got a, a ranga pens uh, i know this is a, this is a case they gave me ranga handmade pens this is one of the dip and write uh, pen the, i i love to write because it's a, because of this tall ness uh, i i like it when i dip and write i enjoy so I, i like to be photographed when i'm writing with this it's a beautiful pen thank you thank you sir thanks a lot thank you great that was wonderful uh, so i think we should now conclude the session uh, it's been lovely having you here mr rao uh, lovely to hear you uh, talk about handwriting uh, we've had like meet said in his introduction we've had people uh, who make pens we've had people who fix pens we've had people uh, we had prasad last time who talked to us about vintage pens and calligraphy today was a little bit of a different flavor we've had just preet yeah. who talked about being nibs so it's it's been a uh, an interesting set of sessions for us today was no different uh, to all our audience thank you very much for uh, your enthusiastic contribution uh, i learned a lot from this session personally and uh, i hope everyone did too and uh, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, since we were able to take all the questions which is a rarity it does not usually happen we are left with some unhappy people whose questions we are not able to take today fortunately we were able to do that as well uh, so to everyone uh, thank you very much for uh, spending your uh, saturday evening with us uh, mr rao thanks again for uh, your time uh, and all the effort that you put in the session uh, it was uh, lovely having you with us and to the audience uh, please do subscribe please hit the bell icon it really helps us with the youtube analytics uh, please also uh, hit the like button which also helps us and stay tuned same time next week for another lovely session bye have a great weekend and stay healthy stay safe thank you thank you thank you so much thank you okay